I was tense from page one and the anxiety did not stop throughout the book because it is so thrilling. I hope the movie does not make a liar out of me. In December, I was in the mood for snowy thrillers, and one of the books I picked up was No Exit by Taylor Adams. I loved that this was an isolated setting in the middle of winter in a blizzard because I live in Phoenix and we don't really have winter here. Snow is very foreign to this Phoenician girl. I was blown away by this book. Firstly, if you are feeling stressed out or overwhelmed in your life, this may not be the right time to pick up No Exit. I was tense from page one and the anxiety did not stop throughout the book because it is so thrilling. No Exit is about Darby Thorne and I believe she is a college age girl. She is driving through the mountains of Colorado to see her sick mother. So her mind is really with her mom as she is driving through the storm in the mountains. Suddenly the storm gets a lot worse and conditions are very dangerous. So Darby decides to pull over at a rest stop or a truck stop where luckily, or maybe unluckily, she is not alone. There are four strangers that are stranded there with her. These strangers are stranded together and they don't have any cell service. Darby goes outside to check one more time to see if she can get through to her mom to say that she's going to be delayed. And when she's out there, she sees a small hand on the inside window of the van outside. She doesn't know who the van belongs to, but when she looks in the window, she sees a small child trapped inside of a dog kennel. What would you do in this situation? The things that go through Darby's mind are precisely what I would be thinking. Firstly, Darby's freaking out because she doesn't know whose van this is. She knows that obviously someone at the rest stop is a criminal because they abducted this child or they're holding the child hostage. So she doesn't know who she can trust. Secondly, she doesn't know how she could save this child and get out herself because she is stranded and snowed in at this rest stop. This all happens super early in the book, so you know that you are in for a action-packed adventure because this is right at the beginning. Darby is an incredible character. I loved her. She is very intelligent. She is very resourceful, and she's definitely a good action hero in this book. All this action and suspense is precisely why I say this book had me super anxious and why you maybe shouldn't read it when you're stressed out because my heart was pounding this entire book. I was tense reading it because I did not know what was gonna happen. There were so many twists. There was so much action. The only complaint I had about the book is that it was all action all the time. And so towards the end, I was just kind of wondering, okay, can we catch a break? Like this is getting a little bit ridiculous because it just, the twist just didn't stop. And so it was a little bit overkill towards the end. That did not detract from the overall enjoyment I had reading this book. It was fantastic. And I am so excited because tonight, Hulu is coming out with the movie adaptation. If you've seen my video being a critic of the Death on the Nile movie that adapted Agatha Christie's novel, you'll know this is one of my favorite pastimes. I love reading the book. I love seeing the interpretation of the movie. So I have an awesome date night planned. My boyfriend has not read the book, but I know he loves action movies. So I told him he's going to love this. I hope the movie does not make a liar out of me. I'm ready to get this date night started. I will definitely come back and tell you if I really think the book was better than the movie or if the movie did a good job representing the book.
I've got my wine, I've got my fireplace, and I am ready to talk about this no exit movie. Firstly, I need a sip of this wine because that was intense. I am still processing that movie. Now that I've calmed my nerves, let's talk about it. The movie definitely gave me the same vibes as the book, and that was really high tension, fast action, right out of the gate stuff is going on. Pretty early on in both the book and the movie, Darby finds the child, and then she finds the culprit pretty quickly. So you don't spend too much time trying to guess who done it. Majority of the story is Darby trying to figure out how to save the child and how to save herself. I was impressed to see most of the twists that I was expecting from the book in the movie. And even though some of them you can totally see coming, it still is a good time and you enjoy it nonetheless. The casting was great and Asha's smile was just heart melting. It was so gorgeous. Darby was just as much of a badass in the movie that she was in the book, still resourceful, still a badass. There's one scene where she's stuck in a very uncomfortable situation, quite literally stuck, and she finds her way out. And even though that was slightly different, it's okay, you still get the point, it's still amazing. I'm kind of speechless at that part. I don't think I can do what she did. Obviously the movie is going to add some different visual aspects. So when there was fast action or injuries or gore, I mean it's not a gory movie but you get what I mean, kind of the impact of the injuries. However with the movie you're going to miss the internal dialogue. So Darby is on her way to see her mom and kind of the guilt that was driving Darby to get there super quickly, you didn't really grasp the extent of that and how much she really wanted to see her mom and the complications around that relationship. I mean, they definitely alluded to it in the movie, but the emotion behind it, you're not gonna get. Stories where our character or characters are trapped definitely makes my heart pound and gives me extra anxiety. And even though I love me an isolated thriller, being trapped or held captive is something that really makes me bite my nails. And this was exactly that vibe. I really miss the internal dialogue of Darby where she was trying to weigh out her options and different things that she could do to get herself out of the situation, her and the child. So I missed that level of intelligence. Everyone wants to be involved. <laughs> hi, hi, you wanna be in my video? Oh my goodness. Everyone has something to say. We're switching up the dog situation right now. Ed is a character at the rest stop with the others and in the book, I loved him. In the movie, I liked him a lot. He is a retired Marine and I should have known that watching this movie with my boyfriend who was also a Marine, he'd have some pretty strong opinions about this. After the movie, I asked my boyfriend what he thought of it knowing that he hadn't read the book. All I told him is that it, it was fast action. I told him the initial plot, pretty much what I told you guys, how Darby's stranded and finds a kid in the back of the van. And so he watched it and he couldn't get over two things. He thought the Marine should have saved the day, not understanding that Darby's the main character. And then he was also really mad because every single, I'm not gonna call it like a plot hole, but every single opportunity that Darby could have taken to just kill everyone <laughs> and she didn't take because she's a good guy right like good guys typically hesitate before they kill someone right it's not like first nature or first choice to go just kill someone uh so he was really frustrated you know why didn't she do this why didn't she do that why didn't ed save the day um so he couldn't get over that that was his only feedback in the movie i don't know if he liked it overall or not that's just what he had to say you like how she chooses to be right there when there is a dog bed? Right, right there, right there. Nice comfy bed. And I guess the couch is also comfy, so I can't totally blame her. Overall, I think the movie did a great job representing the book. I think that the book leaned a little bit more towards being a thriller, just because it had a little bit more of a psychological aspect to it, just slightly. And the movie was a little bit more action-based. It wasn't a huge difference though. I mean, the book is very plot driven, which is easy for a movie to capture. So it did a great job. I loved seeing the storm that trapped the people at the rest stop as well. It honestly wasn't as bad as what I was imagining in my head, but I'm also very dramatic. 
you don't say i've seen snow like twice in my life so i was picturing something like mount everest and it wasn't that bad i still wouldn't drive in it especially like the aerial shots when they show the road the mountain roads that darby's driving on that was kind of terrifying but i did like seeing the storm that i was imagining in my head throughout the book while the plot was pretty much the same between book and movie there was a slight difference in like the epilogue the author tried to do some kind of a twist in the book that made me roll my eyes and tried to play an emotional game with us which i didn't really appreciate uh, but besides that little aspect, that little trick the author played, I did enjoy other aspects of the epilogue and the book better. In the movie, they took a different route with closure. It was okay. I mean, I didn't really care. I didn't have an emotional bond there. So I think the very, very ending was better in the book. So I guess thank you to Taylor Adams for inspiring me to pick up the movie adaptation of the book because it gave my boyfriend something to do since he doesn't read as much as I do. So at least we got to share in it together and had a fun little date night. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this date night and for this movie critique, and I will see you in the next video.